All right, so in this video, we're gonna work on solving by completing the square. We're gonna do this step by step. You can see I wrote down all the steps and we're gonna talk about when A is not equal to one because that's gonna be a little bit different variation from our typical kind of completing the square. So the first um, step we're gonna do is ensure the quadratic equation is in standard form. And again, we're gonna do this for solving the quadratic equation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in this form. Um, you can see it's already in descending power order. So now I can just rewrite this here as a uh, two x squared plus seven x minus four is now going to be equal to a zero. Okay, I've got that good. Um, now we don't want an a, right? So whatever number is in front of our x squared, we gotta be able to divide that out. So we're gonna divide the entire equation by the coefficient of the quadratic term. Um, if it's not equal to one, which in this case it's equal to two. So we're gonna divide every single term by two. And when we do that, we're now going to get a x squared plus a seven halves x minus two is equal to a zero because remember zero divided by two is going to be a zero. Then what we wanna do um, for completing the square, we just wanna kind of focus on the value that we're gonna complete the square with, and that's gonna be the x squared and the 7 halves x. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add the two to the other side, just so I can go ahead and isolate uh, my uh, quadratic that I need to complete the square with. So therefore, that's gonna give me an x squared plus a 7 halves x, and then when I add a two to the other side, that's now gonna give me a positive two. All right, so here comes a little tricky part where a lot of students, um, well, a lot of times kind of, you know, get stuck here. And that is gonna be my b divided by two. Now, the reason why the b divided by two in this case is going to be tricky for a lot of students is because you already have a fraction, right? So we already have seven halves, and then we're gonna divide that by two. But just remember, if you have a fraction divided by two, what you can do is get rid of this fraction by multiplying by one half here on the top and the bottom. So when you go and do this, two halves times one half is just gonna be one. And what we're gonna get here is now going to be a seven fourths. So just notice my b divided by two is equal to a seven fourths, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and square that value. So when we go ahead and square a seven fourths, what we're now going to get here is going to be a 49. Oh, I'm running out of space, so let's go ahead back and move this over here. So therefore you guys can see everything that I am doing. So when I go ahead and move this over, um, that's now going to be a 49 over um, four squared, which is going to be a 16. So 49 over 16. Okay, so again, what it says is we need to add this to both sides of the equations, right? Because whatever you do on one side, you have to be able to do on the other side. So now what I have is a X squared plus a seven halves X, and therefore it's gonna be plus a 49. So plus a 49, over 16 equals, again, adding this, so it's gonna be a positive, positive 49 over 16, and then don't forget about the two, right? A lot of students will forget about that twos over there. Now, the next one that kind of gets a little difficult here, it says rewrite the left side of the equation as a perfect square trinomial. So a lot of times, if it's something that's easy to factorable, some students are like, oh, I know how to factor it, right? <laughs> like, you know, you just factor it down. But when we're dealing with fractions, a lot of times that can be tricky for students. So what one thing I want you to always recommend here is the factored form of the perfect square trinomial is always gonna be the form of x plus or minus a b divided by two quantity squared. Okay, so if the trinomial is has the middle term positive, then it's gonna be a positive binomial. If it's negative, then it's gonna be a negative binomial. So what was my b divided by two? Well, if you remember, we did the b divided by two, which is right here, right, which is our seven fourths. So therefore, I can now factor this down into an x plus, right, because it's a positive, x plus a seven fourths, and therefore that's now gonna be equal to this right-hand side, which kind of looks a little tricky in this moment. So it's gonna be an x um, plus a seven fourths, quantity squared, and now it's gonna be equal to a 49 over 16 plus two. Okay, now obviously you could go ahead and simplify that um, as you get to it, but that's what we're gonna do in the next step. So it says simplify the right equation if necessary, and this step is definitely going to be, because if it was like a number, we would just simply add them, right? But in this case, you see we have fractions. So what I wanna do, um, if you remember, when you wanna add fractions, what you need to do is get a common denominator, right? So if I look at this, I can say, all right, well, let's go ahead and rewrite this as a 49 over 16, right, plus a two. Now, that's not really gonna work like this, right? You can't add a fraction to an integer. However, one thing you can do is you can put this over one, right? And actually, I'm gonna write this over here. So if I had a 49 over a 16, right, plus a two over a one, okay? Now, remember, when you're adding fractions, you gotta get the common denominator. So the common denominator here is gonna be a 16. So I'm gonna multiply this by 16 over 16. Therefore, now what that's gonna give me here is a 49 over 16 plus here, a 32 over 16. Now, what is going to be a 39 plus, um, I'm sorry, a 49 plus 32, right? And remember, you keep the denominator the same. That is going to be an 81 over 16. So therefore, it's gonna be an 81 over a 16. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and erase this part. Don't really need that. But now it's going to rewrite our equation the way that we had it. So we have an X. I'll go back to using my blue. I don't know why I'm going back with the red. So therefore, this is going to be an X plus 
and 81 over 16 quantity squared. What am I doing in 81 over 16? I'm going crazy. This is going to be a seven fourths, right? So that's a seven fourths quantity squared is equal to now this 81 over 16, right? So you can see I did the work over here on the little sidebar. So that's going to be a 84, uh, 81 over 16. Okay, now what we need to do is take the square root of both sides, right? Because we need to solve for x, but you can't subtract the 7 fourths to the other side. You have to take the square root to get rid of the squaring, and then you can go ahead and um, then you can go ahead and subtract the 7 fourths. So when I go ahead and take the square root to both sides, um, what I'm going to be left with here is going to be an x plus a 7 fourths. And just make sure when you introduce the square root, which we're doing, right, you have to make sure you include the plus or minus. So it's going to be a plus or minus, and therefore it's going to be a 9. The square root of 81 is 9 and the square root of 16 is going to be four, right? Remember, you take the square root of a fraction, you can take the square root of the numerator, as well as being the denominator. Now to solve for x by adding and subtracting the constant from both sides. So you can see this, um, now I just gotta use my simple inverse operations, right? Um, I just gotta go ahead and subtract the 7 fourths over to the other side, so therefore it's x is equal to a negative 7 fourths, and therefore it's gonna be plus or minus a 9 fourths, okay? So now what we need to do is just do the positive as well as the negative result. So um, remember, the denominator is the same at 4, so we just need to apply the operation to our numerator. So in the first example, I'm going to have an x negative 7 plus 9, so therefore that is going to be a positive 2 over 4, which is equal to a 1 half. And then the other result is x is going to equal a um, negative 7 minus a 9, which is going to be a negative 16. So x is equal to a negative 16 over 4 which is now just going to equal to a negative four. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, in this example, we have two solutions. We have x is equal to one half, as well as x is equal to negative four. If you're looking for more examples or more help with solving by completing the square, then go and check out the next video. I